Hi, I'm Lainey Law. And I'm attorney Andrew Myers. Today, we're going to be discussing the 10 worst intersections in New Hampshire. I'm standing at the worst intersection in the entire state of New Hampshire. That is according to the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration and the New Hampshire Department of Transportation. Their accident statistics statewide in New Hampshire were crunched by both Business Insider and by Time Magazine. They came up with a list of the 10 worst intersections in the entire state of New Hampshire. And this is number one. Where am I? Hang on, we'll tell you. So today we have a special guest with us. Today we have Ron. Oh, Hello. Ron Bath, yes. Uh, Ron was a TV photographer in New Hampshire and in Boston, and Ron knows the roads fairly well because if he was out covering something and there was all of a sudden some spot news, he had to run there really quickly. So Ron, welcome. Hey, Andy, how you doing? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. We're just uh, hanging out, uh, talking about the 10 worst intersections in New Hampshire. Uh, and I'm going to, in a little bit, get to the fact that uh, the law addresses this, but how do the courts look at it when you have an accident in a bad intersection? But first, Ron, do you have a, a worst intersection that you've dealt with? Actually, yeah, I think, I believe it's one of the worst I've ever come across. And I, I live like... Just uh, feet from it, actually, here in Manchester. And it's which the, uh, the Amoskate Traffic Circle. Which? The Amoskate Traffic Circle, uh, exit six off of 293. Oh, yeah, that's right by the river. And there's an exit from 293. And people are coming across the bridge. Nobody knows where they're going because they mm -hmm. don't know whether they're going to the east side or the west side. Is that the one? Yep. Well, I'll tell you right now, though. Um, People don't realize it, but you, what intersection that is, is it's Front Street, Main Street, Eddy Road, Goffstown Road, and Emmiscake Street, all combined into that one intersection. And it's a mess. Oh, it is a and mess. Yeah, I know that, what you mean now, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, not, not only that, is that it all converging. And then you got to add the ramp traffic, right? Because that's right. that success. You have cars coming off of exit six, coming on to uh, exit six, going down to 293 North. All this is happening all at once. And you know what it's like at, uh, in the morning, like seven o'clock? No, tell it's us. It's a mess. <laughs> it's a mess. You basically, you, you, you close your eyes, push the gas. That's it. Go. Oh, good grief. I hope you're not driving with your eyes closed. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Laney, do you have a worst intersection in New Hampshire? Oh, gosh. So we were talking about this before, and it was hard for me to pick because there's a lot of different ones that I've had horrible experiences at. But one that came to mind in particular for me was the intersection of Amherst Street and Route 3. And I think that just because it's a really big one, I think a lot of the time people aren't paying attention and maybe they're like, you know, running that yellow, not realizing that you have people taking right hand turns, you know stuff along that nature but every time that i've driven past that it's just pretty chaotic it's over by exit seven and exit eight in nashua so that one is busy and a little chaotic at times from what i've experienced oh okay my worst intersection is also in manchester uh it is after you go by all the stores on south willow street going south first of all nobody pays attention to the lights they're running them and, and turning right and left but you get past all of the stores on South Willow Street and you go over the bridge over 293 and 101 going towards the mall. So first mm -hmm. of all, people aren't paying attention. Second of all, the lanes shift. There's a, an area where you can only make a left turn. There's a lot of pavement in some parts of that intersection. It's not really intersection, but the road going straight through where you can't even go at all. They have it marked off. I actually had an intersection accident uh, case there one time, and one of the big insurance companies, they have a little newt as a, uh, <laughs> was defending a guy that wasn't paying any attention to any of that traffic and just barged right through and caused an accident. And their defense in that case, we, we did well in the case, by the way, but the insurance company's defense was that those signs are confusing. And 
I've always thought that was a mess and that uh, somebody should wake up and redesign that whole part of town. But mm -hmm. that's just me. Yeah, no, that area, that whole mall area, it's a little extreme because it's just like, I don't even know how many, it's like five, if not six lanes in that area, because it's just like right before that mall intersection is just like you have people coming in and out of the highway. So it's just like you have all those people rushing in from the highway, all those people that were at the intersection right before that trying to get in. It's people it's pass it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a mess. It's a... Why don't we... Uh... Go now to the 10 worst intersections in New Hampshire. I'll take the first one. How's that? Perfect. For the 10th worst intersection, routes 111 and 3A in Hudson, just on the eastern side of the Merrimack River Bridge into Nashua. The roads meet at an angle. There are visibility issues seeing around the corner. While at this location taking the video, a person who works in the area every day told our crack camera crew mm -hmm. that... The day before this video, a tractor trailer actually drove in the wrong way and blocked the intersection as it backed up and went through the right way. Not a great intersection also because there are lots of signs. And if you are not familiar with that area, there's just too much to read. It's a mess. Yeah, so intersection number nine is going to be in Rochester. The intersection of Route 202, a major east-west highway in New Hampshire, and Estes, Estes Road, sorry about that. It's a major road, but look at the shrubbery right against that street causing visibility issues. And look at the skid marks. It looks like we just mixed an accident or two. In Goffstown, North Mast Road, South Mast Road, Elm Street, and Route 13 all come together to give New Hampshire its eighth most dangerous intersection. But it's anything but a four-way meeting, and it's more like a double Y kind of an offset. People who use this intersection are not surprised it's on the list of the state's most dangerous intersections. The other thing about that Goffstown meeting of the streets is that it is right in front of the popular Goffstown Sully's supermarket, the town common, and the town library. I hope nobody's reading a book as they drive through this area. First of all, what's your name? Holden Taft. And where do you live? Dunbar in New Hampshire. This is a bad intersection. Do you, do you agree with that? Yes, it can be bad at some times when it's busy, absolutely. And why do you say that? Probably like just the way it's like mapped out or something like Sometimes the drivers don't know how to go through the intersection and it can lead to chaos. Have you had problems here as a bicycle rider? Well, no. Well, I mean, I just wait to, at the sidewalks for people to let me go. I haven't had too many issues. Uh, there's a list of the 10 worst intersections in New Hampshire, and this is number eight. Does that surprise you? No, really. I could see it on that list. It is a bad intersection. I do agree with that. and. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. What do you think about this intersection? I think it's every man for himself. Why do you say that? Well, you gotta be kind of aggressive to get through it, which I never had any problems with it, but people will toot their horns at you if you muscle out too quickly. This is uh, on a list of the 10 worst intersections in New Hampshire. Yeah. This is number eight. Does that surprise you? No, it doesn't surprise me. A light might be helpful. You're on your bike today. Um, do you have more problems because you're on a bike in this intersection? Oh, well, we're not going anywhere near that on our bikes. Why not? Well, look at it. Yeah, no, we're turning around right here, staying on the bike trail. All right. Thank you. So I'm doing a podcast on the 10 worst intersections in New Hampshire. This is number eight. Does that surprise you? No, because it's hard to get in and out of that intersection. If you're coming in from the side streets, it's a little difficult. Okay, so. you were telling me before that they've talked about improving it and they've never done it? Uh, not that I know of. Uh, they've talked about lights and so forth, but uh, that's all I've ever known. Have you ever had any personal problems getting through the intersection? Uh, just takes a little longer than you would hope. Other than that, eventually you get in and out. But of the whole state, I mean, New Hampshire is not a big state, but there are a lot of roads, north, south, east, west. Um, isn't it unusual that one of them right here in Goffstown is on the list of the 10 worst? Uh, I don't know how you could fix it. What's your name, sir? Lionel Coulon.
for intersection number seven. That's going to be in the center city, Manchester. Bridge Street and Beach Street. Bridge Street is a major connector from the downtown up through some residential areas and up to Route I-93. And Beach Street is one of the major north-south city streets. It's easy to see how it could be dangerous. A good portion of Manchester's traffic goes through here. And between construction and pedestrians, it's easy to see how things could go awry. Manchester actually contributes two intersections to the most dangerous list. Coming in at number six is Beach Street and Silly Road. This intersection is only a block from where the major thoroughfares of Willow Street and Queen City Avenue meet at an angle. So this end of town is just chaos in my view. If people aren't lost and distracted here, more power to them. <laughs> so those are the first, uh, the top, uh, I guess the bottom <laughs> okay, at intersections 10 through 6. Ron, do you see any trends there? Mm, other than uh, inconsiderate drivers? <laughs> <laughs> Manchester drivers? <laughs> Basically, uh, I think all the new cars are coming out with just one pedal, and it's the gas pedal. <laughs> <laughs> Laney, do, pretty you see much. Any, do you see any uh, common threads between these intersections? I don't know. I joked about it, but it would it makes sense to me that it's in Manchester, not only because it's such a densely populated area to have two of the top ones, but just because th there's a lot going on in those areas. With the Silly Road one, I was surprised that Silly Road made the cut and not the Queen City, like that type area, because like the Silly Road one, it's got some pretty bad visibility, but it's funny to think that people, like you make it through like this other crazy intersection that's huge, got a lot of spaces. It's got like a light where, you know, two lanes can be going in one direction at once. Like people are turning left onto it while other people are going straight. Um, but it's funny, you make it through that and it's just like Silly Road is where it all goes <laughs> wrong. I think some of the problem, in all these intersections, uh, not only the one in Amherst, uh, but the ones in Manchester that you talked about and that Ron talked about, these roads were designed so long mm -hmm. ago when, you know, there was not that much traffic. There might be one car that went by every hour. Now, as Ron pointed out earlier uh, in that uh, exit eight area, the traffic is just unbelievable. Um, mm -hmm. Manchester has just seen so much growth. It used to be a, a tiny little sleepy little town. And that's not true of Manchester. That's not true of Nashua. That's not true, really, of anywhere in New Hampshire. So that's that's kind of how I see it, that the roads and all of New Hampshire were designed way back in a, a different era. But the roads really haven't changed, have they, Ron? No, they have not. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you, you uh, that's exactly what I was thinking, was that they were built so long ago that, um, no, there was not very little traffic, and, um, and they roads were narrow they were built now there, there was no need for them to be now not to compare it at all but um i did have experience in florida and the roads in florida are huge they're wide the intersections are wide and sometimes uh, my brother-in-law actually went down there and it scared him he says I, there's, there's too much room <laughs> said, but that's um and then you come up north and it's like you know like in manchester an old old city um and when people start parking on both sides of the street, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sometimes you literally have to back up because there's just no way. Uh, you know, Winter Street in Manchester is ridiculous. They park on both sides of the street, and there's no way for you to get down if someone's coming the other way. Mm -hmm. Just can't do it. Yeah, Manchester has a lot of that, actually. You know, in the old days, yeah. um, New Hampshire has changed a lot, in my observation. And uh, it just seems to me that... In the old days, people said Massachusetts drivers have a reputation. I know New York drivers have a reputation. And there's actually a word, I don't know if we want to use it, but there's a <laughs> word that New Hampshire drivers used to use for Massachusetts drivers. Ron, do you think really that that's true anymore? Do you think New Hampshire drivers, what we see on the roads these days in New Hampshire, do you think New Hampshire drivers are any better than Massachusetts drivers? It's always greener on the other side. <laughs> they're always going to be, you know, yeah, they're always going to be uh, saying that the opposite is, you know, Massachusetts, all oh, New Hampshire drivers, they drive like, you know, uh, you got a cow on your head. And um, <laughs> and in New Hampshire, it's like, oh, you got your crazy Massachusetts 
However, I will say though, Connecticut just oh. uh, <laughs> uh, I you know I used to, I traveled uh, to uh, back and forth to Florida uh, like four times a year. I drove down from New Hampshire to Florida on ninety five, and every year it got worse. I mean, to the point where people just did not care, and mm-hmm. you know, um, dangerous, real dangerous. It's oh, almost. Yeah, yeah. Down in Connecticut, they've got the uh, Turnpike Route 95 there that was so dangerous, they had to take the toll booths down because people kept crashing <laughs> yeah. into them. Remember that, Ron? People kept crashing yes. into the toll booths, so they had to take them down. Started oh, crashing okay. into it's them. I know. <laughs> oh, it is. I mean, you know what a toll booth is. It is funny to agree because it's like, how are you crashing into this? Like, also, you like see it from so far away. <laughs> like, yeah. it's, it's like... I mean, that's happened in New Hampshire, but it happened <laughs> all the time. In I kind of am familiar with that area. I had some family down there. Briefly, I had uh, some work down in southern Connecticut, and you're right. They drive crazy. But getting back to my question, stereotypically, the Massachusetts drivers were always said to be worse, and New Hampshire drivers were always said to be so polite and nice, and I don't think that's true anymore. Am I, am I well, wrong? What I, what I want to say, what I can say about that, though, is that um, I think the reason why you think the Massachusetts drivers, Massachusetts got a lot of city. Mm. New Hampshire doesn't. or Well, it is now more, but I mean, think about it. You've got two major cities. You've got the Queen City uh, and you've got Nashua. Um, well, then you have Concord, but that's, as you get further north, though, mm, you know, yeah. it's a little smaller, but um, but that's I think that's the thing is that Boston, you know, Massachusetts, you got so much, so, so many roads, you know, um, Lowell, that, Boston, yep. just all these different Lawrence. cities, yeah, Lawrence and yeah. Lawrence North in Derry. It just you know, I mean, you mentioned Manchester and Nashua, but Derry is the fourth largest municipality in new hampshire in terms of population and you wouldn't know it just driving down the de- the downtown but it's all you know a lot of commuters that live out in the burbs and so they're in a hurry in the morning and in the evening they're in a the morning to get to their even with zoom <laughs> and post pandemic they're in a hurry to get to their jobs down on route 128 495 uh and down in boston and it's just i uh i may or may not get some backlash over saying this but driving in that area of the state I don't think is any better than driving in any of the places you two have talked about in Massachusetts. I'm sorry. <laughs> One of our uh, viewers, a commenter, even said that a lot of the times that it's the that the Massachusetts roads just suck, and he feels that like <laughs> the mass drivers just get a bad rep, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that the lines have blurred between those horrible Massachusetts drivers and the nice, polite. <laughs> New Hampshire people, I just, I just don't. The polite New Hampshire people going 80 miles an hour perpetually. It's like in all lanes. <laughs> all right, let's go back to our list. Let's finish up the list of the, of, now this is the top five bad intersections in New Hampshire. Lainey, do you want to start out? Yeah, perfect. So now going back to the list of the most dangerous New Hampshire intersections. Now, here are the top five. So rated at the fifth most dangerous New Hampshire intersection is actually a rotary. Very spicy with that one. The Dairy Traffic Circle, also known as the Danforth Traffic Circle after the Danforth family, a farming family, one of whose members became a physician, Dr. Mary Shepard Danforth. After a serious motorcycle accident here a few years ago, the town of Derry held a hearing. Town officials insisted that there are rules and drivers need to follow them. Citizens at the meeting said that that's the problem. Many drivers do not follow the rules of the road. If the yield signs are gonna going into the rotary were any bigger, they could see them from the International Space Station. So number four, we have the intersection of Loudoun Road and Fort Eddy Road in Concord. This is right next to the major commercial area with grocery stores, coffee shops, and other businesses. It's also right next to I-93 exit 14, the major on and off ramp only a few blocks from the New Hampshire State House and other state offices. Concord also hosts intersection number three on the other side of town, the interstate I-89 north off-ramp to Clinton Street. Clinton Street also being State Highway 13. This is right next to the Concord Park and Ride bus stop. So 
I can see people being late for their bus, coming down this off ramp, looking at the time, checking to make sure they have everything they need for the commute in. Uh oh. The second worst intersection in New Hampshire is actually another traffic circle, the lead traffic circle. They redid the lead traffic circle several years ago, adding raised platforms in the middle and new signs. But the question is whether it's really any better. This is right up the road from the famous Lee Speedway racetrack. Do drivers going through the traffic circle think this is actually the speedway? Well, interestingly, experts, uh, traffic experts, which we're not, but, but I think we are actually, we all, <laughs> all three of us drive a lot. Um, experts say that speeding is one of the top causes of accidents, uh, followed closely by distracted driving, whether people are texting, talking on the phone, eating, yelling at somebody in the back seat, or doing whatever they do. So speeding, distracted driving, and then impaired driving, whether mm. it's drunk driving, or anything else um ron what have you seen um well uh, um well I, I can say is on 95 but uh, i've seen it all um I've seen it where, <laughs> i really have it I actually well yeah if i had uh, maybe sometime i could show you some pictures of uh because that would when my wife would be driving most of the time and I would have my uh, my cell phone with me, and I'd be taking pictures. Like I cannot believe what I'm looking at right now. I got I got to get a picture of this. <laughs> Is it something you can't really tell us on camera? Oh no, it's just uh, <laughs> just people that I don't know. The, the dangerous. Um, they're really not driving. They're almost like they're uh, get some. They're doing other things, you mm -hmm. know, because they got a huge huge map in front of them. <laughs> And they got their their hand like this, you know, um, and they got a map in front of them, and yeah. uh, they're going back and forth, like a you know the man on the trapeze, you know, mm -hmm. back and forth. And then I've actually on Route 93 going into Boston, which I know you've done a lot. I did for a while uh, in the stop and grow traffic of Route 93. I've actually seen people reading a paperback or reading the Herald. And I'm thinking to myself, you know what, when I was a strap hanger and rode on the subway, sure, sure, you can read a book or you can read the the Herald, maybe not the broadsheet globe, but <laughs> you know what, I mean, if you like to read, which I do, you don't do it while you're driving a car. It's just, it's just crazy. Mm -hmm. You know? I had I've a... heard... Uh... Oops. <laughs> no, I was I've just going to... What were I... you going to say? No, no, I said, I, I heard about that. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, being, um, being in the media, uh, Back then, you never got a, a time for lunch. Sometimes we'd be going from one story to the next story. So what about a break? No, no, no break, no break. Keep going. <laughs> so I would always bring my lunch with me, and I would be eating on the road. I'd be going from one location to the next, eating. And um, I got to the point where I was so proficient, at, at, efficient with it that uh, I could uh, eat soup. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever spill it while not, you were driving? Not spill it. Really? Yeah, while I was driving. Oh yeah, all right. But I won't ever admit to that. <laughs> we just did. Folks at home, uh, we do not recommend doing this at home. The no. trained professional. No. <laughs> well, talking but, uh, about yeah, you see it. Talking about speeding, Ron. You do you still have your motorcycle? Do you still ride your motorcycle? No, and you know what? On, on really serious note, there's a reason why I don't uh, drive a motorcycle. I don't own a motorcycle anymore. Why it's because that? of the of the trips back and forth on 95 it got worse and worse and i kept on imagining i was in my car you know all in case like a, a tank with four wheels and bumpers and everything and i said my god if i was driving a motorcycle right now i'd probably be killed yeah mm -hmm. because the way the cars be, you'd be just driving along and all of a sudden they'd be right in front of you you know it's like you know and i hit the brakes if i was on my bike i'd be going sideways you know trying to avoid them Mm -hmm. um i i uh, i won't drive a motorcycle anymore and There's... a lot of my friends have actually stopped doing that because of um all the uh the fatals fatalities mm -hmm. and that's too bad because i know you used to enjoy that and i've known uh other people that i mean having a motorcycle yeah. is a blast you know, ride over to the beach uh it's a great way to have uh, a, a good time and and see the state in a way you really can't see it in any other way uh, and we certainly are not here to disparage motorcyclists but hot off the press just uh, the day that we're recording and doing this podcast new hampshire state police 
this past week, and I don't know if you heard this, Ron, New Hampshire State Police clocked a motorcyclist doing 171 miles an hour. Yes, I said that right. 171. The uh, New Hampshire State Police on Sunday uh, saw a motorcycle going 120 miles an hour. Then he actually sped up to 160 miles an hour. They had to call ahead. They, when they first saw the guy, he was on Route 101 in Exeter heading over where else to the beach. And by the time they actually stopped him, Trooper Parker was able to obtain a speed reading of 171 miles per hour, which, you know, I mean, that's unimaginable. I can't imagine riding a motorcycle at 171 miles an hour. One, you know, you're endangering yourself. Two, what about all the other people in the traffic? Three, I don't know what three is, but it's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. Any. Well, think, about, think about this. Think about if he's doing 171 miles an hour and, and an object, a truck or something came out in front of him, instant stop would be an explosion. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't find any parts of that motorcycle or that person anymore. Think about it. if you, you know, I'm not a scientist, but um, if you did 171 miles an hour hitting an immovable object, think about it. Mm -hmm. I think even oh, in a car, oh. even in a car with all that metal around you at 171 miles an hour, I can't even imagine that speed. Yeah, but you're on a bike. There's okay. nothing. You have nothing there. What do you got? A front wheel? That's it. <laughs> you to go face first right into whatever it is, you know, and um, game over. Mm -hmm. I'm not a pilot, but I think some of the smaller aircraft take off at that speed, don't they? I mean, that's the guy's a blur. The guy's a blur on the highway, and it's uh, you're right, Ron. It's just I I can't think about it. I don't want to wrap my mind about that around that. It's just and that it, was not. I'm not sure. The, did you get the time on that? Was that wasn't at night, right? Uh, the time. I'm not sure if that was. Uh, uh, doesn't say. Oh wait, yeah, approximately five fifteen on a Sunday, going to the beach. PM. Yeah. yeah, not at not the morning. 15 p.m. Yeah, Oof. middle of the talk day. about danger. Yeah, and a lot uh, of people on the road. That was that was a beautiful day. That was one of our first really beautiful, beautiful, beautiful spring days. And usually, at around that time in the afternoon on a beautiful day like that, the traffic's all coming the other way uh, from the beach back to wherever in New Hampshire. But nope. still, it would be relatively. Exeter is a fairly busy city. And uh, Route 101 is kind of a bypass around Exeter. You could get on it uh, over in Epping and then go kind of skirt around uh, Exeter and then get back into it. So I can see a lot of slow pokes getting on Route 101 and then getting off Route 101. Then this clown comes along at 171 miles an hour. That's crazy. That's just nuts. Mm -hmm. Try to avoid them. Think about it. What if you needed to avoid them? How can you avoid somebody going that fast? You can't. Yeah. You know, you, you can't look even in think. your rearview mirror one second and see nothing, and then the next second. Right. You know, exactly. Exactly. Wow. So um, I'm sure they throw the key away or him, but <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> well, he was charged with, let's see, this is just hot off the press, folks, so forgive me for reading off this. The man was uh, charged with reckless driving, reckless conduct, and aggravated driving while intoxicated. Uh, he was actually released on personal reconnaissance bail and is scheduled for arraignment in Hampton Circuit Court on Ju June 1st. Crazy. Okay. Back to the bad intersections. <laughs> yeah. One thing that's always amazed me is that people always blame the road. It's the mm -hmm. road's fault. It, that's a bad intersection. Uh, there was an accident recently in one of the towns we've mentioned. I'm not going to repeat it. The other day where a car flipped over and people were saying, oh, well, that's a bad road. Well, you know what? When these cases go to court, it doesn't really get people very far to say, oh, well, it was a bad road. Uh, there's actually a case that went all the way up to the New Hampshire Supreme Court uh, where there was an accident uh, at the intersection of the Bypass 28 and Wellington Road. It's uh, east of the city. And a man was killed. He was driving on, on uh, Bypass 28, which is the major north-south road around Manchester. And a guy was driving eastbound on Wellington Road, blew the stop sign, went into the road, hit the car that was going uh, on Route 28 Bypass. He died. 
So uh, his family, the executors, brought a lawsuit in the uh, Superior Court, and it ended up in the Supreme Court up in Concord. And the issue in that case was whether the, um, they, first of all, they exhausted the insurance of the guy that blew the stop sign. That's number one. They, they got his insurance. But, you know, in a, in a wrongful death case like that, that's really not enough. And the family members then sued the state of New Hampshire and the city of Manchester saying that this was a terrible intersection. And they knew about the fact that it was a terrible intersection. There had been a number of accidents at that intersection in the three years before this accident. And the city of Manchester pointed the finger at the state and said, we think that you should put a flashing yellow light, red light at that intersection. Red, obviously, for Bypass 28 yellow for Wellington. So this this goes back a little bit. The, the uh, intersection is a little bit different now, but back then the city of Manchester told the uh, state of New Hampshire, we want a flashing light. Nothing happened. And so this went up to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court said, hey, you know what? You can't really blame either the city or the state because um, this is what's called a discretionary function. In other words, where officials sit down and either they're legislators or they're executives and they make a decision whether to do something or not to do something, that's a discretionary function. And the law protects the city and the state from liability in a case like that. So they said, you know, sorry, uh, the case is dismissed and uh, you, you really can't uh, go anywhere. Actually, the procedure was a little bit different, but we're not in law school civil procedure. Uh, 101. Mm -hmm. So uh, the bottom line there is that you really don't do well in blaming the city or the town for a bad intersection. There's another case uh, over in Rochester. We talked about Route 202. Uh, this was at the intersection of Salmon Falls Road, not far from the bad intersection we talked about before, but different. Uh, what happened in that case? Again, somebody blew a stop sign, uh, went into the major road, which was 202, and in this case, the passenger in the car that ran the stop sign sued everybody. And the New Hampshire Supreme Court said, yeah, that's a dangerous intersection. But then having taken note of the fact that it was a dangerous intersection, ignored the fact and then went on and uh, found that the guy that blew the um, stop sign, he's the guy that's liable. So the, the moral of the story here is that, yeah, there are very bad intersections everywhere. But you know what? If you legally want to hold cities and towns accountable for these things, you've got a tough row to hoe. I'm not going to say it's impossible. It has happened. There have been cases. But I think these two cases uh, that went all the way to the New Hampshire Supreme Court uh, pretty much represent uh, what happens in court. The first one, the Wellington Road accident, that case, although it's a little bit old, it's been cited favorably 14 times in other uh, Supreme Court cases, and it's never once been overruled or even mentioned negatively. So that's the law in New Hampshire on bad intersections. It's not necessarily bad intersections. It's more bad drivers, mm -hmm. you know. It's interesting, I guess, to me that, like, even though the town knew it was a bad intersection, that, like, they can't be held liable for something like that. I mean, ultimately, it's the town's responsibility to want to make sure that things are as safe for people as possible. But it's interesting, I guess, to me, like, what can you really do to, like, when you know something's a problem, like, how to make the town act on that? Well... What you can do is drive carefully. Yeah, drive carefully. <laughs> in the dairy traffic circle situation, again, there there was a meeting, and they mm -hmm. had a meeting, and so they can write down in the reports that they had a meeting. <laughs> but the bottom line was the local officials said there are rules you got to follow them, and the people at the meeting said, well, people don't follow them. So it kind of went it went around in a circle, and I don't want to say what I think is going to happen there, and I hope I'm wrong, but. Um, that's really all you can do is is stop blaming the road and open our eyes. Ron, did you have any closing thoughts about this? Well, um, yeah, actually, uh, I saw a bump. You were talking about Massachusetts drivers, uh, and this is no joke. I saw a bumper a bumper sticker uh, the other day, and it said, <laughs> "Got brakes?" Question mark. <laughs> you. <laughs> have you seen that the bumper sticker says it's got milk? <laughs> Remember that one? This is got brakes. Use them. Yeah. Yeah. And I, was... I saw another one with the um, the initials A A M Club. All about me. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, well, that's that's pretty much uh, that that sums it up, you know. But I think that I think, yeah. like I said before, I think that's true in both states now. I I I question whether New Hampshire drivers are any better anymore. Mm -hmm. Same. They're the same. They're the it's a uh, it's all transients, you know. Uh, they come from Massachusetts. They moved to New Hampshire. Doesn't matter. <laughs> same people. And if people if people don't like what I just said, send your hate mail to the comments below, <laughs> and we will respond in a future podcast. Right, Lainey? Yeah, of course. And now we've talked a lot about you know what intersections are bad and uh, things that we can do to prevent it, aka just paying attention. With all that being said, now what is the number one worst intersection in New Hampshire? This, folks, is the worst intersection in the entire state of New Hampshire. Again, that's according to the New Hampshire Department of Transportation and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Their statistics, again, were crunched by both Business Insider and by Time Magazine. This intersection, in case you don't recognize it, is the intersection of Broadway and Main Street. Now, those are also routes 28 and route 97 in new hampshire two very major intersections in southern new hampshire now i've been through this intersection many 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 times and it's a tough one it's undergoing a lot of changes right now with a brand new development down the road called tuscan village it's where the rockingham park racetrack used to be and it's now being redeveloped into condos and major commercial uh, developments so the way I see it, and I'm not a traffic engineer, nor am I a civil engineer, but I am a taxpayer in New Hampshire and also a motorist who, again, has been through this intersection many, many, many times. My guess, it's not going to get any better. I'm just surprised that out of all of the intersections that the worst one would be in Salem versus, you know, some place like we talked about, Concord, Nashua, Manchester, Derry, the more populous areas, but maybe part of the reason that it's not as densely populated contributes to the fact that people aren't used to driving there and less, you know, cautious or aware of what's happening on the road. Well, I think uh, the interesting thing about what you just said is I did a blog article on this very same topic, and I think it was nine years ago, if I'm not mistaken, and that even back then, that was the number one worst intersection also back then. So I think, and I don't know, I'm not a traffic engineer, I don't pretend to be one, but I think the problem at that intersection is because the um, racetrack used to be there, and there's a lot of construction now. They're converting it into Tuscan Village. There are a lot of restaurants that are going up. There's like a little mini, um, not a strip mall, not an outlet mall, but kind of a mishmash of of stores. Uh, I'm not going to name them. I could, uh, mm -hmm. but there's a bunch of stores there. And it's so new, uh, and there's so much construction there, as you can see behind me when I was doing, uh, standing out there in the intersection and risking my life talking about <laughs> it, uh, that I think people get the wrong idea that they can just like drive like a crazy person and uh, they don't even see the light. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's a lot of construction. I remember when they were doing construction, you were coming southbound on Route 28, just coming to the intersection. And it was extremely confusing. I'll say it. They did a horrible job of marking off where the construction was. They had those little cones in the middle of the road, but people were driving on both sides of it. So it's not just me. Uh, and so that construction has been go ongoing for a long time. I don't think there's any end in sight. They tore down a bunch of the buildings. There was an old bakery there. There was a real estate office there. Uh, there were a bunch of other businesses there and they tore them all down. So, um, there are a lot of distractions there, and I don't think that people are really paying attention to the road so much as the distractions and having no idea where to go, and that every time you drive down there, seemingly, there's different construction in a different area. So that's my take on that. Yeah, and that makes sense. Like, you, you said it perfectly there. It's the distractions. It's just seeing the construction happening. It's like an accident when even if the road is clear in front of them, a lot of people will still slow down because they're turning their heads, like, not paying attention to what's in front of them, but what's happening along the sidelines. Okay, well... Ron, thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate it. I know you're a busy guy, but thanks for coming in. Um, sure. If you have any comments or 
critiques of uh, our uh, website or our, our podcast today, please let us know. Um, you can go into the comment section down below. If you'd like to talk to us about an accident, a wrongful death, a car accident, a slip and fall, uh, any kind of an accident like that, uh, you can go into the comments section. You can go on to my website, attorney-myers, M-Y-E-R-S, Dot com. That's attorney-myers.com. Uh, you can either go into a, the contact us block or the telephone numbers are up above. Thank you guys so much for watching today's episode of About the Law. Thank you once again, Ron, for joining us today. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe and check out our latest blog post on Angie's website. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll see you next time. Thank you. You have been watching About the Law, a production of the law offices of Andrew D. Myers in Methuen, in the Merrimack Valley of Massachusetts, and Derry, New Hampshire. Please give us a like and subscribe. The foregoing is offered for informational purpose only. It is not intended as, nor does it constitute, legal advice. Laws vary widely from state to state. You should rely only on the advice given to you during a personal consultation by a local attorney who is thoroughly familiar with state laws and the area of practice in which your concern lies.